Well, blessings to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God continues to bring forth the amazing work of reformation and revival in your land. Um, again, I thank Mr. Suman Victor for the opportunity to speak to India, um, to have this opportunity to exhort you and admonish you in regards to growing in the grace and knowledge of God and coming to a better understanding of God and His Word. Ultimately, that's the goal. As we get our hands on a Bible, what we want to do is we want to see what was God, this, what is God saying through His inspired Word. Again, in 2 Timothy, in the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, he told him that all Scripture is useful for correction, for rebuke, for training in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God, in our modern equivalent, would be thoroughly equipped for the work of God. So that's our prayer. As we have a Bible in our hands, we our goal is to get a better understanding of God. And if I may, I'm going to explain some things to you today, but what I want to do is just open up with a reading from Scripture, and I'm going to highlight what that is and what that means, and prayerfully bring you into a better understanding of those regards. If I may just introduce myself real quickly, I'm Pastor Michael Miano. I'm pastor of the Blue Point Bible Church located in New York in the United States. I um, I am also director of the Power of Preterism Network, and I am a team player with Team Preterist. Um, again, preterism is uh, a, a doing an amazing thing within the world of Christi Christianity, um, helping people get a better understanding of what the scriptures do indeed teach, helping lead us away from false teachings. And I praise God that Mr. Suman Victor, through his ministry, Helping Hearts and Hands, is furthering those efforts there in India. So I've been invited and I truly praise God for the opportunity to be invited to speak to you and I praise God that Mr. Suman Victor is doing the work of getting Bibles into people's hands there in India. So the reading I'm going to take us to is in 1 Thessalonians, that's in the New Testament in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm going to read us through from chapter 12 to verse 24. What Thessalonians is is a writing from the Apostle Paul who was actually a Jewish leader who had at first persecuted the Christians however eventually had an experience with God and that experience led him to seek out the first century disciples of Christ and they led him into the faith and then the Apostle Paul became one of the foremost teachers of Christianity and he wrote largely most of what we know as the New Testament today which are letters and writings collected from early churches that the Apostle Paul had planted that he went around teaching people and made these churches in specifically in the Asia Minor region of the um, of the Gentiles um, churches such as the Thessalonians um, Ephesus we have uh, Colossae um, quite a few the, the Roman church gathered over in Rome the Corinthians again these were churches that were gathered and we're reading writings from the Apostle Paul to these churches to either further encourage them um, in regards to the truth of God, what they should be doing, how they should be living, or he's writing to, you know, rebuke them in regards to things that they should be, uh, they should not be doing. So here in Thessalonians, I just want to take us into the instruction, and then my goal is going to be to help us get a better understanding of what the Apostle Paul was seeking to make clear to the church at Thessalonica. So he says this, starting at verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Again, thanking Mr. Suman Victor for the work he's doing there in India. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strives to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May, the God, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Again, this is the Apostle Paul writing to that first century church in Thessalonica that would have been waiting for the fulfillment of the coming of the Lord. We know that 
Jesus had said in Matthew chapter 16 that some of his disciples would be alive at the time of his coming. We know in Matthew chapter 24, again, Matthew being a first century disciple of Jesus Christ, recording the teachings of Jesus, he had wrote in his writing, the gospel according to Matthew, which again is a part of your New Testament, he wrote that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament, which are those host of 34 writings that you find in that Old Testament, 34 or 32 Either way, that's neither here nor there. Um, the Old Testament is compiled of Jewish writings from Moses, the law, right? God had revealed to Moses the law. Then you have Joshua, who seemingly completed parts of Deuteronomy, as well as wrote his writings and possibly a lot of judges. Um, and then you have the different prophets, Samuel, who probably wrote the books of Samuel. Then you have the kings, which would have been collected most likely by different kings. You have chronicles, which again was chronicled by the different kings. The prophet Job, Psalms, which would have been written by the hand of David and other songwriters there in that time. Proverbs written mostly by the hand of Solomon, one of the wisest men in Israel. Then you have different prophets such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, and they're all prophesying about the soon coming day that God would restore them through the Messiah. The New Testament is highlighting how Jesus Christ had fulfilled that and ultimately the instruction for the first century churches to continue to see how Jesus Christ had fulfilled that and to see how he was filling that, fulfilling that within that generation. Again, all the way up to the end of that generation at the year AD 70. So that's what you see in the Bible. And if you remember the instruction there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, again, test all the prophecies that we should not despise words from God, that we should be willing to hear people out and do as the noble Bereans did in Acts chapter 17 verse 11, where they searched the scriptures to see if this man, Apostle Paul, what he was saying to them was indeed true and was in line with the word of God. However, they had to have a narrative understanding, which means you have to have a general understanding of the writing. So the best thing I could encourage you to do now that you have a new Bible in your hand is to plug into a community, to get involved with a community of people who read the Bible, begin to read the Bible from Genesis forward, and get a healthy understanding of what it says. Allow the text to truly inform you of things such as the coming of the Lord, which again was a glorious reality that was being waited for by the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Again, the Bible explains that. So if you get you study through the old all the way to the new and you get a narrative understanding, again, like a story from Genesis to Revelation, you get a basic understanding. Then you could go in and do the deeper study of testing everything and seeing if the things you're learning are true. So my best exhortation to you is stay close to Mr. Suman Victor. Stay close to the church leaders in your community. Exhort them to teach from the word as it would have primarily been understood a very uh, popular um, interpretational method, a way of understanding the Bible that has been highlighted more recently and a part of my ministry is to highlight what we call audience relevancy. Again, how are the details that you're reading relevant to the audience that they were primarily to? If you're reading a first century letter, right, majority of the, well actually all of the first, the New Testament writings are first century letters. So the most important thing you can do is become familiar with how these people in Judea and the surrounding regions thought in the first century. How did they understand things that were being said to them in these writings? Then you go back to Genesis and you say, how did the people of the ancient Near East in these times understand these writings? How would the people in 6th century BC, would, how would they have received the writings of Jeremiah, which were again from that time period? So that's how we get and uh, the best understanding of the Bible, get a narrative understanding, better understand the story, then go back and begin to test the things. But the best encouragement I can give you is do this in a community. You have to plug into a community. There's no such thing as the Lone Ranger who sits in their room and studies the Bible and gets their own interpretation. We see very clearly from the Apostle Peter in the New Testament, one of his instructions to the scattered elect was that no man can get a understanding of the Bible based on his own interpretation, that no writings of the prophets were done by their own interpretation, by what they idly thought on their own. Again, that is what leads us into error. So the best thing you can do is get is what is going to prove all things in chapter I mentioned in the beginning of the video, which it says, prove all things, examine everything. So the best thing you could do is read the Bible, and it involves you, you to prove all things, to damage any better standing of these writings than you do that, you'll have the best of this, you'll grow in the
grudge of God, and it will become an eternal reality. To Timothy, again, the Apostle Paul writes to his son in that letter, which we have divided into chapters, in that letter, verse 16, the Apostle says, the man who does, or in our modern context, the woman who does so, need not be ashamed, because they rightly divide the word of truth. Again, get a understanding of the context of these rights, general understanding of the story, and study out the details. And do that with a community, and you'll be blessed. You'll continue to do as the Apostle Peter says in his writing in 2, Tim uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, 15 to 18, he says, continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of God. I pray that this will exhort you and encourage you to do exactly that. I pray that you'll find that community, those people that will encourage you to be diligent, and you will continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of God and see how the inspiration of God in your life can truly lead you to find life to the full that Jesus Christ has promised us. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that this message has been encouraging. I pray for my audience over there in India. I pray that you'll stick close to Brother Suman India, um, Suman Victor, and that you'll continue to see a revival and a reformation take place there in India. Glory to God. Take that Bible, hold it close, hold it dear, and truly see the inspiration of God in your life. Go in peace, saints. God bless you all.